Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now, Nokia have made a brilliant comeback into the smartphone market and it seems as if they have a smartphone for every price point. Now, recently they launched the Nokia One, their cheapest Android smartphone to date. So I got hold of one and let's see what I found out. Nokia's naming scheme is simplicity in itself. The higher you go, the better the phones. At the top end, you've got kind of like the Nokia 7, the Nokia 8. There's even rumors of a Nokia 9. If you want something in the middle, you might go for a Nokia 5. Then towards the low end, you get the Nokia 3. And now there is the Nokia 1. Now, the key to the Nokia One is its price. I managed to pick up my unit for 75 euros off contract just from a retail store. That translates to about 100 US dollars. So as we look at this device, everything that we talk about is gonna be in the context that this phone costs $100. It doesn't cost $200, it doesn't cost $400, it doesn't cost $800, it costs just $100, and yet you have Android Oreo 8.1 running on it. You've got a full working uh, touchscreen smartphone with GPS and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and everything else you'd expect. So what does 100 bucks buy you? Well, let's find out more. So when you look at this phone, it certainly is old school. And what I mean by old school is, you know, it's got a removable back, it's got a removable battery, the SIM cards don't go on a tray, they kind of go in their own little slots once you take the back off and you can get access to them. And it really does look like a phone from maybe 2011, 2012, that kind of era. Now that isn't necessarily a bad thing. I actually do like the idea of phones that you can change the batteries. I like the idea of being able to take the back cover off and be able to change it with different back covers. But here on the Nokia One, what Nokia are really going for is affordability. And to do that, they need to be able to manufacture it easily, which means it's not going to be very particularly complicated with aluminium this and chamfered edges that and all wrap around glass the other. This is gonna be your basic plastic phone with a pop-off back cover, and that's fine because you're only paying $100 for it. Now, one of the downsides of Nokia opting to use the easiest to assemble design is that actually the bezels are quite thick on this thing. And that's fine, again, if you take the $100 context into consideration, but just remember, this is not gonna be any kind of edge-to-edge -edge display. We're looking at a very, very simple uh, design process here. There are some plus points to this design though. As I've said, you can now get uh, exchangeable covers which, you can, which are sold separately by Nokia. You can always buy yourself a spare battery and pop that in so that you've got a spare battery with you at any time. There are two SIM card slots in the model that I picked up and an SD card slot. And because it's not using a tray, you actually can use two S, uh, SIM cards and an SD card all at the same time without any problems. So there are advantages to this older way of designing uh, smartphones. Now moving on to the display, this really is a quite a weak display. In the sense it's got a very low resolution, just 480 by 854. That kind of sticks it into the realms of phones that we saw, as I said earlier, 2011, 2012. You're not getting great brightness from this display. It works indoors perfectly, it works outdoors quite well, but in strong sunlight, you would have trouble reading it. On the plus side, it is an IPS LCD display, which means you don't have that problem where you kind of twist the phone, you can't see what's on the screen, you've got wide viewing angles, which is always good, and the color reproduction isn't as bad as actually it could be at this price point. Moving on to the internals, here we have kind of the lowest end possible processor available, because again, price here is the main thing. You've got a quad core MediaTek device with four Cortex A53 cores. Now the Cortex A53 is a 64-bit processor. However, the version of Android running on this device is actually a 32-bit version of Android. There's also a very simple Mali T720 GPU, which will handle games like Subway Surfer. I've tried it out, it plays quite well, but don't expect to be playing any of these high-end sort of first-person shooters or any of these complicated 3D games that you can get on the Play Store. There's also one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of internal storage. Now, obviously eight gigabytes is a very small number today. Again, that harkens back to phones of several years ago. Now, what they've uh, Nokia have done here is they're using Android Go, which I'll talk more about in a moment. But one of the upshots of using Android Go is that actually there is four gigabytes of free space out of that eight gigabytes, which is actually pretty amazing. My Note 8 
has 11 gigabytes used just by Android and the pre-installed apps, but this phone manages to get all that down into kind of round four gigabytes, leaving about half of the internal memory free for photos and music and media and apps. It's also worth mentioning this is a 4G phone. You've also got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, 4.2. On the back of the phone, you'll see a small little hole where the external speaker is, and the external speaker is really pretty bad. Uh, it's tinny, it lacks depth, but it will ring when the phone rings. You can hear game music coming through it, and you could probably even use the phone on hands-free without it being a terrible, terrible experience. But don't expect any kind of fidelity here to any music that you'll be listening to. I found an option called Bess Loudness, in the options, in the settings there. And I don't really know what it does, but I kind of told it on and off a couple of times. And I think the external speaker sounds better with it uh, off and with the volume kind of tapped down a couple of notches so you don't get that distortion pulsing its way through that tiny speaker. The good news is when you put in headphones, the music quality does improve drastically. However, the, uh, the audio circuits in this phone still lack clarity and there's definitely a lack of punch down in the bass tones. The good news is that it's a 2,150 milliamp hour battery, which for a phone with only a 4.5 inch display, with that low resolution, without all this other fancy stuff that goes with it, actually gives you a lot of battery life. In fact, you'll easily get seven hours of on-screen time out of this device, maybe even eight, if depending on your usage. There's no quick charging included. However, you can charge the phone from zero to 100% in about four hours. So basically you're looking at charging it up overnight. I remember the days of when Motorola released the first Moto G. Basically you didn't get anything in the box with the device. Luckily with the uh, Nokia one, you do get a charger, you do get a USB cable, and you do get some very, very simple uh, earbuds. The ones without any rubber cups on them, just the plastic ones that you put in the kind of this hole here in your ears, which I can't wear, but that's a whole different story. Now, when it comes to software, the Nokia one uses Android Go. Now, Android Go is a version of Android that uh, Google have optimized to work on devices with one gigabyte of RAM or less. They even say or less. I'm glad the Nokia one's got one gigabyte. With Android Go, it's actually quite a pleasant experience. There's also some cut down versions of the popular apps. For example, there's a Gmail Go version. There is Maps Go, for example, which gives you kind of Google Maps uh, uh, functionality, but by the way, without any turn by turn navigation. But you also get the Play Store, and the Play Store, of course, gives you access to all of Google's uh, apps, including the full version of Gmail, including the full version of Maps. And I've installed both of those on here and they work absolutely fine as well. What's also interesting about the Play Store version is it will recommend for you apps that are particularly tuned, light apps or Go apps that are particularly tuned for Android Go. So that's good. When you've got a choice to make, it will recommend one that works better on these low end devices. Other than that, it's a pretty vanilla uh, Android experience, which is good. There's no skins on top. There's nothing to slow the phone down in that way. And also there's a couple of other neat built-in features. For example, there is a data saving option and you can actually switch that on in Chrome so that you can get your data compressed before it comes down to your phone. Of course, the idea is here is if you're on a uh, plan from your carrier that doesn't have much data included into it, you're not wasting it on downloading kind of uh, data from the internet. Uh, but the downside is this data has to go first of all to Google servers where it will then be compressed and then it gets sent down to your device so there could be a privacy concern there for you. Also Android Go is very friendly toward SD cards which is absolutely fantastic because Google for so long have kind of not wanted us to use SD cards at all but here in Android Go because they know they're aiming for a particular market where people might not have large access to data plans or they might not have high speed access to the internet. This device actually is very friendly toward SD cards. When you pop in an SD card, it will say, do you want me to turn this into internal storage? Which you can say yes. You can also opt for it to be portable storage. And if you pick internal storage, then it's actually fairly easy to move apps and data from the actual internal storage over to the SD card by kind of going into the settings, finding the app and saying move so that it moves over to the uh, internal storage. And that's a great way of being able to expand the internal storage on the Nokia One. It actually supports up to 128 gigabytes uh, micro SD cards. 
And finally, we come to the camera. Basically, you've got a five megapixel shooter on the back, a two megapixel shooter on the front, and it will record in 720p HD. Now, the camera is not very good. I, I, there's nothing more I can say about it. It's slow, there's very little features in the, in the app that comes with it. It will take photos. I found that if I kind of clicked, you know, and took the photo and then moved too quickly afterwards, just after I've clicked it, then you kind of get ghosting. So I learned to have to kind of click and then wait, hold my breath to not move the phone and then move on. And that did improve the quality of the photos dr uh, dramatically. But basically it's gonna be okay for emergency situations. And it's okay if you've got no other camera whatsoever, this is your first uh, smartphone, uh, then you know it's better than nothing at all. But don't expect much uh, in the way from these cameras. And so there you have it. Now the context again here is the price point, $100 or 75 euros. You can't really compare it to devices that are much more expensive. I didn't even bother to benchmark this thing because I know there's no point in quoting the numbers. The question is, can you use it? Is it usable? And the answer is yes. If you don't have the money for a more expensive smartphone, then this is a great way to get into the connected world of Android. You get access to the Play Store, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got Bluetooth, you've got 4G. Okay, you can take photos, you can play games, you can use social media. It's a great way, your first step onto this ladder. Personally, my recommendation would be if you have a bit more money, then go for the Nokia 3. Nokia 3 has got a better display, a better processor, better everything basically. And it, it's more expensive, but it's not much, much more expensive. So in your market, do look out for the difference in the price between the Nokia 1 and the Nokia 3. If you can't afford the Nokia 3 or similar phones, and you want a smartphone, definitely get the Nokia one, but there are limitations and you have to know those limitations. Well, my name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up. You also know what else I'm gonna ask you. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, leave a comment below. And well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.